Arise, minions, and welcome to Unmade Gaming. We are here. We are back for season two of Paradise City. Now That's with right. production value. I know. You see that? <laughs> this is what happens uh, when 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 people sub to our Patreon. Uh, speaking of which, link down below. Um, Do it. We are back for season two. <clears throat> That wonderful trailer and all of our trailers and all of our teasers, which you can see on Twitter, uh, was made by the wonderful uh, Little Red Dot. We are doing some production trade-offs uh, between the two of us. So, um, yeah, so that was super cool. Uh, we're happy to be back for season two. We are down uh, one Miss Molly McGee, um, who needed a personal day today. So we're going to slide them out of here. We're going to focus on Artemis and Judd. Uh, and we're going to get back into things. Uh, so if you guys like what we do here and you want to support the channel and the things we do, check out that link down below for our Patreon or subscribe here on uh, Twitch. We're trying to get to 20 subs this month. Uh, if you want to interact with the chat, the best way to do that is in the bottom right-hand corner. You'll see the corruption bar that bar starts. Two purposes. One is when it fills, I get to do whatever the hell I want to these wonderful characters. And two, every single dollar that goes into that goes back to their wonderful, beautiful, amazing faces uh, that you see here before you. Uh, that being said, previously <clears throat> on Paradise City... It has been a month since the events on the rooftop of the Yamashiro building, and nobody seems any the wiser. As if orchestrated from on high, none of the security cameras caught any of the events, and its employees and residents aren't talking. Artemis, Judd, and Molly are hell-bent on digging deeper into the mystery they uncovered, this time without the criminal expertise of Friday, who was called directly by Mr. Vidalas to settle some debts. New Arkham has, for better or worse, returned to normal, the death of Sam Spade becoming a small blip on a radar. We cut in as we have a montage sequence to cover the last month of time. Uh, we start with Artemis. Artemis, after the events of the Yamashiro building, what have you been doing? Well, first off, uh, me and uh, me and Judd had to uh, clear up his name and get him... Uh... Right, because Judd is a domestic terrorist. Is a domestic terrorist at the moment, or maybe in general, could be both. Sure, right. <laughs> I mean, I'm, it's it's very incriminating when an, a building explodes, your car is found outside, and then mm -hmm. they they take your car to your apartment and find all kinds of like murder boards and connecting to like city officials and like and like illegal and like, photography. Yeah, yeah, like very very real, like like. Maybe not fully illegal, but definitely sketchy, like yeah. hacking shit, yeah. like it's penetration definitely like testing when, software. And... Yeah, when when Ed Norton goes in the basement of, of Paper Street <laughs> and he's like, what's going on here, right? That's what the cops walk into when they go into Judd's safe house. They're like, what the fuck? This guy's I, a psycho. <laughs> I, what I was... Why is he so obsessed with the marinas? <laughs> <laughs> what, what I'm Let's throwing it up. And... and Feel free to, to to tell me that this would happen a different way, sure. Cherry, if you think so. But uh, I'm almost imagining that this is like a combination of, uh, like it's Art and Judd together, obviously. But mm -hmm. I think I'm assuming it's like a combination of like them showing that like it actually wasn't Judd, like actually like you know uh, proving his innocence, and then also. A combo of that and, uh, you know, getting him off for the very real crimes that he did actually. Yeah, commit. I think I think during the the little uh, Patreon after show we talked about like roughing you up so it looked like you had been right in, in a gutter for several days right. and like, and like... going in and I found this man around the corner in a gutter. Um... Basically, the idea was because these guys were impersonating. <laughs> Uh, Vidalis already. The idea yes. was to make it look like I tried to just go to the Tartarus for a night out and, you know, was the unlucky victim of circumstances. But I think, I'm, I'm basically imagining that, like, part of the deal is, like, in order for them to, like, kind of turn a blind eye to, like, the recording equipment and, like, <laughs> this, like, this computer nightmare over here. Like, I'm imagining, like, that's where they're like, okay, well, establish an actual you know detective agency and take that equipment there and use it for the business yes and, yes you know, okay. by the way i quit <laughs> yeah and, and also after Artemis gets uh <laughs> judd all set up but maybe maybe she brings in her new fancy lawyer prop that she's slightly blackmailing to also help him out oh right you're blackmailing yeah. 
Um, what was his name? Um, Shit. I have it. I have it. You uh, have it. Uh, Thomas Hagen. Thomas, Thomas Hagen, Hagen Esquire was who you were blackmailing. It's more like sure, sure, if, sure. if uh, you know, I'm now a client of yours, and, you know, I'll pay you and make yeah. it look clean, whatever, but. Or else. If you don't, if you don't help me with what I need, and or you know, answer any questions I have, I'm gonna let people know that you murdered some people. Alleged, <laughs> allegedly, I'm gonna let it allegedly. slip that you allegedly murdered. I some mean, people. <laughs> you know, let it slip um, over the edge of the building. Um, but okay, yeah, I think I think that's probably what we did to to clean up Judd's thing. And yeah, uh, Artemis Artemis goes ham because. I, I feel like everybody in the the group that you know Friday's got got stuff to do kind of realizes fuck, um, we need to up our game if we're gonna figure out who pulled the string on this. So yeah. Artemis goes and buys the whole building, not just Sam's office, the whole building. Oh really? Okay. Yes, because we need our Ghost Musters Clubhouse we're, of Awesome. We're, we're draining <laughs> we're draining some of Daddy's bank account. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's fine. Um, you know what? Just for shits and gigs, uh, mm-hmm. roll me a sneak around. Uh, so you'll yeah. succeed at getting Judd off, obviously, but I want to see what to what degree. Okay. Um, so you can add add whatever you want to add to that up to up to three yeah, points. I don't need anything. Yeah. I hit. I didn't hit any buttons, but apparently, uh, no. Let me like... let me uh, let me add some stuff. Uh, ch- 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 and, and this is for getting Jet off? Yeah. Um, I mean, phrasing, but yeah. And <laughs> can, uh... <laughs> we'll get into the other part of the story that has nothing to do with Judd later. Uh... Uh, I'm going to use Command's Reverence. Okay. Because she's not usually doing shady shit, so she might as well pretend like she's not. Right, right. Um, photographic memory? No. Um... You gotta sell um, me on that one. I don't. Yeah, I don't think that. I don't think that works. Okay. Um, maybe always prepared. Okay, I'll take that. Because as a cop, aside from like getting into a suspect's head, you have to be prepared to, you know. Yep. That's oh well, I could cool. do this, even though as a cop, you may not actually be able to do that. Um, I'm just gonna go with those two because I don't really feel like any of the other. Okay, cool. Uh, so then roll it with plus two. Mild success. Mild success. Okay. Um, so on a 79, it's complicated. Uh, so you definitely <laughs> get him off, but it is a little complicated. Um, and uh, I think what we're going to do here is uh, in the in, maybe in the after show, uh, Judd, you gain a nemesis. Someone who does not believe Artemis' story. Mm. Someone who thinks that you are maybe not a, 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 a massive uh, bombardering criminal. However, uh, they think that you're up to no good. So we'll have to create you a nemesis who's on, who's, who wants, who, who's on the hunt for you. Um, See, you thought I was the problem, Joe. Right? Look at this guy. So, so, <laughs> so everyone believes Artemis' story and you're off scot-free. Um, I think the police keep a few things that were the most suspicious things. Um, and, uh, yeah, so they keep the most suspicious things and we'll, we'll have to make you a nemesis who's on the hunt for some, for some, you know, from Judd blood. Justice. Some, some Polyakov blood. Yeah, for some justice. (laughs) Wow, justice. Okay. (laughs) All right, cool. Cool. So, Artemis, you buy the entire building. Just to start yeah, building a can, Ghostbusters clubhouse. Can we talk about? Clubhouse. Can it be like a a cool building design? Like, I'm I'm imagining like like uh, uh, Sam had his office in like some like cool old repurposed building. Yeah. So sure. what I remember from when we were actually there is it was upstairs, and that's where the office was. There were closets, the little secret chamber, and Sam's stuff. Uh, Judd's um, was, so not Judd. Uh, so Sam's Sam's was on the first floor because remember the the bad guy jumped out of the window and ran down the alley. Um, oh, okay. But, I thought it was on the so second floor. For in some my reason. head, which we can adjust fire here. In my head, mm-hmm. it's similar to like um, Jessica Jones's building, um, 
meets like the Ghostbuster building. So it's not yeah. quite a fire an old firehouse, but it's definitely like a multi-story right house that or multi-story building that had other things. Um, and I would say, yeah, it is it is probably like an old warehouse, and like only only Sam was renting it out. Right, there weren't yeah. like a lot of other people. Like no one was outside when you guys went to go answer to a cry like answer a crime call. Um, <laughs> like no one was like, oh no, someone broke in. It was just it was just empty. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to describe this building and, and the remodel, obviously, uh, obviously Artemis has some fuck you money to remodel an entire, yeah. <laughs> entire building. I think, I think she's going to keep, uh, Sam and his partner's desk. Remind me of his partner's name again. I can never remember Buddy. That. Buddy. Um, and she's going to do up Buddy's desk. Very nice. Um, and, and letting, letting Molly have free reign over it, which might have been a mistake but yep. she's gonna let her do it anyway so so um, you're keeping buddy's desk the way it is or i'm letting molly do what she wants okay to because gotcha. it's becoming it's becoming uh molly's desk molly gotcha. is secretary slash badass slash whatever she wants because yeah. she's she's kind of figuring that out in mm-hmm. this month which, secretary uh, slash well, security guard <laughs> security guard slash yeah. sometimes stripper we'll like slash sometimes murderer yeah you know <laughs> just the occasional murder just casually. um and um you know obviously it would mean a lot for art to have sam's desk yep. and, and and do up his office uh, nicer but like she's not she doesn't want to like blow too much money on this and she's she's nostalgic in a lot of ways for for the environment um sam cre- created there might be some more furniture just you know, for talking to people, whatever. Sure. Um, a, a separate little seating area for uh, interviews, long stories, etc. Mm-hmm. And then the upstairs, she's going to let Judd do Judd things. <laughs> Basically pull over the stuff from his, like, safe house that he needs and wants. Probably a few uh, pin cushion boards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like in my head, I see like the bottom floor has like, you know, some plants in the windows and like maybe like oh, yeah. a neon very... sign in it or whatever. And then you this just is look the part up. People see. You look <laughs> up, that's... you look up to the floor above it and all the windows are newspapered over. Right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think maybe like that's like where we, we like go into like full on montage, right? Is yeah. like we get like the montage of Judd like moving out of his apartment. Uh, and like like moving stuff into this uh, second floor uh, of of their their new private detective office, um, and uh, yeah, I think like I think it's probably like a little bit uh, nicer than what he had going on. Like he'll get like some like fancy like monitor, big ass monitors on the walls, right? So it's like you know seems like a real some real spy shit up in there yeah. um a little, a little more technology <laughs> yeah exactly here's a, a, an actual photography studio if you need to do that like a small little little yeah, corded like, one, off like area. there'd be a red room like one of the closets yeah. Is a red yeah. Room. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah that kind of stuff um and then and then we also like because judd is like actually moving out of his apartment right mm-hmm. um we oh. see him like uh, move into like one of those um, uh, like prefab condos where it's like already like all set up with furniture and stuff and it's like mostly like foreign business people yeah <laughs> and then uh, Judd. <laughs> yeah and then like we like see Judd like move in like you know he's like smoking a, a, hit one of his cigarettes mm-hmm. like halfway uh, through movement and um, I think maybe like um we we get like this sort of shot as everything's like slowing down of him just like kind of like sitting alone uh in this very like kind of like sterile like put together kind of condo uh and he's just kind of like sitting in the in the dark for some reason maybe there's like one light on or whatever but it's like very much like that scene where it's like I don't know if you've ever done this, but it's like you're like on the computer or like doing something and like you don't notice how like dark it's gotten. And yeah. then it's like, oh, holy shit. I'm like just sitting here in the dark. Why yeah, am it's I every doing day. this? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, he's he's definitely like doing having like one of those moments. Um, and there's like kind of like 
he's just not all there, right? Like he's not all there in his eyes. And then like we like snap forward again and he's like back to his normal, you know, he's setting up the office. He's arguing with uh, uh, with Molly about like, you know, maybe like he he wants like they like got like some poster or like like, you know, one of those like uh, piece of artwork or something. And like Judd wants to put it upstairs, and like Molly's like, no, like this is nice. I like bought it to put yeah. in the office. And she gives you the hang in there poster with the cat on it. That goes exactly. in your office, right? Exactly. <laughs> and, I, and I feel like Molly and Judd have, or not Molly and Judd, uh, Artemis and Judd have kind of let Molly have this reign over them because A, she's not usually completely wrong, and B, that lets us focus on what we're better at. And yeah. uh, if someone has a design aesthetic, it's Molly, not the two of yes. you. Yes, <laughs> and 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 she's very much like, okay, this is where we meet with clients and Judd. If you need to bring them down something to show, here's here's a little computer that you could use or a laptop, or if you want to project it here, or blah 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 blah. But they're not going up there. <laughs> like she's very much like. Like I wish I wish we had a, a side by side shot of Judd's old apartment and like. Um, um, Artemis's old apartment because I feel like they're just nicer quality apartment for Artemis, but the same apartment really. Like so, yeah. so Judd's is all covered in like newspapers and shit, and like Artemis is covered in like day old pizzas because uh, you 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 were married to the job, so it's like I don't have yeah. time to cook or do dishes or order, so I just order food. I feel like then... she had somebody come do dishes, yeah. <laughs> but like like once she, every couple the... weeks. <laughs> If you open the pantry, it's all like yeah. Easy Mac, and right. like ramen, protein, Easy Mac, protein and the, the fridge is just covered in pizza places. <laughs> the numbers which, of pizza places. <clears throat> which, uh, yeah, Art- Artemis's apartment um, also gets an upgrade in this month. Oh, really? Going so forward, do tell. Uh, me, me, and Kitty talked about this part, so this part is is, is open knowledge and to be shared. Um, Molly and Art start spending a lot more time together, and while Art is a little oblivious at first, Molly eventually makes the move, and they start dating. So that's the other reason that Molly kind of has free reign around the office, is because it's like, I have to go home with her, you don't. <laughs> that's fair, yeah. You don't want to bring home workplace drama and make it home place and drama. The, that's the so worst. the espresso machine, one goes to Art's apartment, and and it goes from just being like purple and dark to maybe uh-huh. Molly's brightened everything up. She mm-hmm. has her own closet now as well because you know, you know how girls do. They move in together pretty quickly. So <laughs> I need I need a spot at your place. I mean, yeah. it only makes sense. Yeah, I think yeah. I think what you mean to say is now Artemis has one closet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And that, so My espresso Molly machine. Impressa- impression wasn't great. I need to work on that. Yeah, <laughs> espresso machine at uh, at the apartment. Mm-hmm. Espresso machine at the office. Like I, I imagine there's a section that's like, oh, here's where you, would you like a water bottle when you wait or a coffee? And she yeah. was like, she like a she's, Keurig she's, and espresso machine. She's more than a secretary. She's like the office manager. Is honestly probably what yeah. we should call her. Um, we had trouble coming up with the title, but I feel like that that works. And then we also discuss oh, God. that she takes one to the around the corner, around the block. What, what, what was oh, it? Oh, just around, around the just block. around the block coffee shop. She yeah. takes one that gives it to the cafe and teaches the boy or whoever <laughs> care how to use it. Oh my God. Um, it's you, it's you on will, the walk from the apartment. You will the, note you know. that the the boy, uh, <laughs> uh, what was his name? Um, <laughs> I forget what his name was. Um, he is no longer at the Just Around the Block coffee shop. Yes. Um, what was his name? He had a That's name. That's suspicious. He had a name for sure. Um, I can't remember. He is no longer there. Uh, he's no longer employed there. Uh, he quit shortly shortly after the events of the, um, the Yamashiro incident, um, mm-hmm. which is shortly after he was given $100. <laughs> and discussed his dream about play, becoming a Fortnite player. Um, oh, so yeah, that's that's uh, uh, that, that you, when you go there to drop it off to instruct him on how to how to pay for it or how to use it rather. Yeah, uh, yeah. it's not it's not an option. He's no longer it's, there. It, it's whoever is there. She she gives it to them. She, she's like, you know, I'm gonna be coming here for lunch. She gets some yeah. orders, some donuts all the time. I, yep. I need you to. I need this. <laughs> you gotta brush up on your business. Um, this is oh, my his, donation slash. His, 
his name was happen. Archie. That was his name. That's great. His uh, name was Archie. Um, and I think I think eventually it becomes fairly obvious to Judd and or we just like straight like Molly would tell him and be like, yeah, no, that's we're hooking up. <laughs> we live it together. Probably <laughs> honestly, like it probably t- Judd is probably pretty oblivious. Yeah. Like less like because he's, uh, you know, like oblivious to romance, and more just because he's oblivious to other human beings, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> like it's he's just like kind of a self-centered person in in his because of his like obsession with his work, right? Yeah. Um. So and, so Molly probably just dropped that bomb. On you yeah. Day. Yeah. You're for like, sure. You look around the office and go, wait, what? Oh. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's probably there's probably like a oh like any time you went downstairs mm-hmm. and Molly wasn't like at like the front desk she was like sitting I imagine in like a pencil skirt with like legs crossed on on Artemis's desk and she's like oh well yeah. Adi I gotta tell you about the one thing this guy came yeah. and he said uh, totally and you're like oh well attention. they just keep they <laughs> chat all the time they're just chatty chatty ladies and that's where Those you left are, it they're two good friends yeah they that's exactly what it is friends that's what it is they've lived uh, together for 20 years they must be great friends such good friends <laughs> Uh, oh, she moved in with her? Yeah, just good for That him. makes sense. It's The city's an expensive place to live. And to, it's an expensive you know, city. We and don't make a lot of money being in, you know, private detectives, so I can understand having to merge incomes. Um, I th- and I, so I think, like, there's there's two things that uh, I, I will mention. One is, um, and I'll let uh, Cherry decide on this if Art notices mm-hmm. or not, but, like, those like kind of weird moments where like Judd seems like a little bit off or like not quite there or just like like just a little bit strange, a little bit not himself, um, are probably present at times at work too. So like if you mm-hmm. notice that, that's like totally up to you. Um, but I think like maybe one of like the last things we see as like he's finishing setting up this like upstairs area. Um, is we get this uh like new you know we've got the old murder boards because like those are still like ongoing investigations but then like maybe like somewhere in the back it's a little more private uh there's like two new boards and um one of them just like has a bunch of uh seemingly like uh, they probably both it's probably just one right okay so it's probably just one board uh it's a bunch of seemingly random faces in uh marked on a map of the city um and uh under them are like under like on each of the the pictures uh there's like little sticky notes with like handwritten notes um a lot of them have like question marks um some of them have like um uh strange events or like like things that could be uh mythos powers and basically like what what Judd is doing is he he's trying to track down all of the uh, 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 awakened people, the, all the people who are waking up in the city and kind of like, uh, you know, some of them he, he like suspects have been for a long time and are like at further stages. Uh, some of them are, are like sleepers, right? Uh, and so, yeah, that's that's what he's doing. Or not sleepers. I forget what the word is for like one step. You're muted. But you're muted. I think it's like borderliners. Yeah, the, like yeah. the people who are like just starting to yeah. to like enter their mythos. But yeah, so he's 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 tracking all the weird magic-y folks in the city. He's trying to uh like identify folks who have okay. mythos. Um, I think wh- Art would notice you being weird, but I don't think she would dig through your stuff yet because she's so focused on moving, starting her relationship, getting the office going, starting working for her dad. Um so I, I'll, it, I think that'll be a more interesting conversation down the line. Sure. Uh, Sam, roll me an investigation. Okay. Regarding that, regarding your your digging into the mythos of the city. Oh, a, a person with one myth is uh, is touched. That's touched. touched borderline or legendary. Um. Yeah. So I will do that. So it's investigate. Um. I have some stuff. Um. Uh, let's see here. Um, I would like to use, uh, some of my new trickster playbook here. Um, because I think like one of the only, 
like real way because like trying to like find stuff out trying to do any kind of traditional investigation is pretty much by default hindered by the mist right yes, correct um like like any kind of like weird events that sort of stuff are all manipulated by the mist to be either ordinary or not investigatable in that sense yep so instead of trying to do a more traditional investigation um he is just using that to kind of narrow leads and then is like kind of trying to like lay out bait and like trick people into situations where he can identify that they're using uh some sort of mythos power hell yeah um and that serves like two uh purposes because like one it helps him identify people and two is it starts to give him an idea of what their mythos might be yeah it's very much like you found crimes that are um that that have been like solved but like the because it's the most reasonable solution and not that it makes the most sense like, the, like it's always like oh it was definitely a burglary except like the window is 10 feet high and there's no other way to get to that window, but it was clearly burgled. But how did that person get 10 feet without any evidence of ladder or anything it's like a, that? Right? Like that what, kind of thing. What it's a lot of is, I don't know if anyone has read or watched um, Good Omens. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> it's like a lot of like the, what like the witch finders are doing when yeah. they're trying to find witch signs. Yeah. Where it's like, uh, you know, looking for weird events and stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, okay. I will use... Um, the Maconian trick and yep. take the bait. Okay. Uh, 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 and then I would like to use seasoned investigator. Okay, I'll take all three of those and then roll me that investigation. Cool. Okay, a nine. All right, so yeah, so that okay. that more or less adds up, right? So on a nine, on investigate um, your. Your clues are fuzzy and incomplete or partly true, partly false, right? Which makes sense for the narrative you have here. I, um, I like the second one more, I think, is like, is like, you know, he's got all of these people on the board yeah. and probably half of them are just not, are just normal people. Right, right? yeah. Uh, it's just, it's circumstantially coincidental to other things that have happened around um, the city. Um, yeah, so you have... Uh, a bunch of crimes that you you're tracking across the city, or uh, or even like heroic reports, right? Of like you know, a woman saves a child from car, um, like that kind of thing. That you're like, I mean, I've heard stories of like the adrenaline and like being able to like lift a car like a mom, but like this seems a little bit much, right? Or maybe that's just not adrenaline. Um, like so, yeah. weird survive, sur like weird people who survive weird yeah. situations. It's like so and so fell from a two story building without yes. a scratch. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, and yeah. it probably gave Judd like perspective on even like the cops are like well this is what makes sense and some of them aren't necessarily bad apples it's just they couldn't explain what the hell happened or mm -hmm, investigate mm -hmm. it fully but there are still of course in this city some bad and terrible people <laughs> do you have anyone on the board that we know uh, oh, I would assume that that Art so, and Molly are on that that board, or he or he's got a code name for each of us. Yeah, something, yeah, something like that. So people people he knows. I, the only reason I don't think Art and Molly are on the board is because they're like confirmed, right? He's not tracking them. Like they're right. why he's doing this. But That's like true. folks that that are like that we confirmed in uh, the last season for sure. So like. Um, uh, the the kid who had this uh, the, the kid who who stole the staff yeah yeah Ermi um, the the lawyer who stole the staff yep. who were now uh, yeah uh, and then like there's probably like a big there's probably like one like blank photo like that's just like an outline yeah right and or, or like a couple of those and one of them is like the kid who like gave Ermi the staff yeah. Ermi, uh, it was that that was there was a kid involved. There was a kid involved. Yeah, yeah. Someone, he delivered it to the lawyer. He delivered it to the lawyer. He asked right. the lawyer to find it. Right. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So like so like that that person out there. Um, who else have we for sure identified? Uh, probably Delia. Delia would be Delia. on there. Yep. Polly um, with a question mark because he hasn't really done anything, but he is related to yep. Art. Yep. Polly and uh, Art's dad, uh, uh, Diego. CEO Mario, Diego, yep. are both Diego. on there for sure. Sure. Uh, with big question marks. Uh, Diego especially probably has like uh, 
like a couple of circles and then like maybe even just like um man what would it be it would be some kind of like a warning note some like yeah. kind of like be careful kind of note like um, a like a triangle yeah. with the exclamation point in it right like a caution yeah stuck yeah on there yeah. something like that okay um and uh uh oh uh vidalis mm -hmm. would be on there for sure um um What's Fred is connect uh, oh belladonna 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 uh i think that's probably it yeah belladonna is another one of the blank pictures uh oh uh molly's boss would be a question mark oh mr gold there yeah yes yep. suspect yep and um, i think uh the atropho sisters or something they're still investigating but i don't know if they would make the board because we haven't really interacted with them yet. sure Sure. Yeah, they're they're definitely yeah. They may they may not make. They're it, on yeah. a board. They're on <laughs> yeah. they're on one of the boards. Right? One of the there's boards. like there's I feel like there's like a shoebox full of like um like blank Polaroids, right? Like just the actual Polaroid itself, not an actual picture in it. That just has names written on the white part. Uh, that's just there so that he can pull it out and like stick it to the board. Uh, for people who doesn't have pictures of. So like the Atropos yeah. sisters are in there. Belladonna has a has a blank uh, Polaroid in there that you can move wherever you need to, whatever you think she's in a crime. Um. Okay, so what other than uh, building up this new uh, fortress of, uh, of, of justice, uh, uh, the Justice League, uh, some might call it, <laughs> what, what the have justice you... <laughs> the Den of Justice. Yeah, yeah. Of, um, we're working on it. Yeah, it's, it was, we're, it's, a, it's in a workshop. It's a work um, in progress. Don't ask questions. What have you been doing to, to track down any leads on the Yamashira thing, or have you been? Or have you so, been focusing on other things? So, um, Art definitely, like, I don't know if, like, Polly and Ermi lived together. I'm assuming that's what, what the situation was. They were at the end. Um, they, they were didn't, at the end. They didn't to begin with. Uh, but it seemed like... So what you were able to get out of it. Um, and I think... So Polly was supposed to meet you there uh, or wait yeah. for you. Um, and what you found out from him is that the door was locked when he showed up. And all the lights were off. So he decided Ermi couldn't be there because he couldn't get in. There's no smashed yeah. windows. So he went to go continue finding him. Um, so what you found out is, like, uh, he was trying to protect Ermi in, like, a flop house, right? Uh, yeah. Because Ermi was convinced people were after him because someone stole his family heirloom. Right. Um, and... People kept like like the same way like a car would drive by like you a car would drive by Ermi's house and like man in black suits and, and that kind of thing so he felt like he was being watched um, and he couldn't figure out why um, and then so uh, Polly was was trying to string him along and like bring him places to, to get him out of trouble because um, he was he seemed like he was wrapped up in some bad stuff. Yeah. So art as like a, a personal thing slash. Here's my new security guy. She, mm -hmm. And it's Judd. She's going to make sure that wherever they are living, that there's their security, that wherever uh, he wants to put the staff, it's like grade A, never going to get stolen again, or at the very least, we're going to know there's a tracker on it. Like, she's going to sure. be like, Judd, here's the budget. The budget is make it the most secure thing we can have while... It's still broken, right? It is still yes. broken. Yeah, the the head was shot off of it. So um, basically, where the I, snakes intertwine over the wings, that that part was like shattered. I don't think she's of. gonna offer to repair it out of yeah. out of, like, well, we can give it a nice case and it'll still look good. But yeah. um, I want to keep an eye on this and I want to make sure you guys are safe with a lock. So on she, it. Yep. Yeah, lock, cameras on the doors. Here, here's your little thing that definitely I can't see anything about yeah. that Judd's never going to track, promise. That's, it's not. It's nothing bad, I swear. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. We, we see, like, Judd setting up the cameras in one scene, and then we see, like, another scene where it's, like, clearly, like, sometime later, and it's just, like, Judd, like, watching a feed, just, like, staring at this... Uh, object. He seems to like studying something on the staff mm -hmm. in the camera feed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I that. Um, and then aside from that, uh, Art has been like, "Yes, I want to work with charity with my dad." 
uh, as a connect to eventually start getting closer to the Atropo sisters and figuring that out. Is I think Charity that's... another girl from the club, or is that... <laughs> just to be clear, wah, wah. it seems that look. I'm not collecting them. I'm Artemis them. has a has a uh, she has a type. Oh <laughs> no, I I do think we like go and have drinks when Molly's dancing every once in a while. Mm. Like that's a that's a new uh, like work thing. <laughs> and Judd sometimes disappears with girls or like <laughs> Judd disappears for an hour, and you're like, I don't know where he went. <laughs> and it's like it it's like you think it's you think it's Judd in like one of the booths, but it's actually Judd outside, like two handed yeah, cigarettes. Just, right? yeah. <laughs> no, I, was, I was just thinking, I was just thinking, he's like out back, like s- selling like some some uh, dancer pot oh, yeah, or something. Yeah. I imagine you like two handed cigarettes, and you're just telling them conspiracy stories. But, like, oh yeah, it's, no, it's them, too. it's them, you and the door, and they can't get around you to go. Yeah. And you're like, and then this other guy, he jumped off the roof. <laughs> like, like I tell you what, there's crazy fucking shit that goes yeah. on in this in this city you wouldn't have it you wouldn't fucking believe th- three and guys molly maybe that- like picks up the the girl that oh doesn't like she either doesn't pay attention or doesn't care to like take care of him have you ever seen <laughs> have you ever seen the movie hackers yes you know yes. the kid you know the young kid joey who's smoking cigarettes and always is like, I have to give us the Gibson. That's Judd. That's young Judd. And he's yes. like, he's just mainline in the it cigarettes. He's is. like, I was in the trash file and I hacked the Gibson. <laughs> God. But, um, but I think perfect. that's something she, she like was like, I want to set up this dad. Mm-hmm. And this is going to be like, I'll come in two or three times a week when, you know, it's not busy and while we're building up our, our client thing because A, she wants a, a second in- income because starting up a new business is yeah. going to be expensive and that first year can be rough. Uh, and it, it's the connect to A, getting back in that building often and and B, you know, there's still, why is my dad just giving these girls a bunch of money and there's no record of who they're giving this money to or what right. they're doing and there, yeah. there were how many elevators? Twelve? Six? Uh, it was a on, lot. On that, on the upper stairs floor, there was, uh, I think there was like twelve, yeah. Yeah, I think there was twelve. And so she's gonna wanna start poking around. Who has offices up sure. there? Who's, sure. who's, who's more likely to be connected to these lawyers who in the building has these people as lawyers and and her and, you know, Judd would take turns, like, gathering that information, whether he's getting it maybe not the most legit ways, or her going to, to set up stuff with the with yeah. her dad. But I, I feel like that's something she's about to start into. Sure. Now that yeah, you've, you've definitely been given access to the building, right? So you have a card yes. that will get you in the main door, and then you slide the card into the elevator, and it gets you to the 33rd floor, and that's it. Uh, because yeah. that's where the Marino's offices are. Um, are um, and that's it seems like based on the last time you broke in uh, that seems appropriate um, yeah. they, they um, all of the IDs only get you to where you need to be right like yeah, where yeah. you're authorized um, and obviously security can change that or whoever's above security can change that to give you more access to more floors uh, but currently yours is primary door access and 33rd floor yeah um, to get to the marinos offices um, but I think what you've been able to find out is uh, currently most of the building uses mm. the law offices of Milton and Hagen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so like <laughs> so many people in like they're like the unofficial uh, lawyers of the Yamashiro building. Um, it's convenient. Perhaps because it's convenient, <laughs> right? Like it's a it's a great convenient uh, place. Um, so have you guys actively been pursuing clues about the uh, the events of the Yamashiro building? Yeah, I think uh, Judd is, is trying to find this kid. That's like the angle he's focused on. Okay, okay. How are you doing that? So I think it's a combo of his, like what he was already kind of doing for like the general finding uh <laughs> the the uh people with mythoses um but then beyond that i think he's like um he's like basically just trying to like work all the the angles that we like we know about this like this kid met with both um uh hermy and the lawyer 
um like he had like a, a somewhat generic description but like you know not so generic that it's like not like we we don't have like an idea of of what he's going after mm. so he's like basically like the main thing he's looking for is like any other not even necessarily looking for like news stories for this one probably working more like personal connections and and that sort of stuff um but and and you know just like talking you know trying to like uh talk to people uh looking for any like weird incidents that have that kind of person or the other one would be um like looking basically any incident where somebody remembers like interacting with a person who has those kind of traits but also has either like weird inside knowledge um is like kind of a little bit out of place for what they're doing um or uh trying to think of like the best way to describe this i know i'm not being super helpful right now um (laughs) oh no hit hit like the the type of person you described like a a kid who Mm -hmm. like is kind of very nondescript that kind of stuff is out of place in a lot of like the circles that he we've heard about him interacting yeah and doing the kinds of things that he's interacting right like he's very in the know and he's very like um uh you know not who you would expect to be talking with like a lawyer or what have you right exactly yeah yeah yeah. and at this point uh via mr gold friday uh vidalis etc we've been told that this is coming from not their side right which means this is either somebody that's playing both sides or neutral or somebody that's pretending to be good so correct that that like focusing on bad guys is easy that's that's what you know art used to do Mm -hmm. and judd would do a little bit of you know both so having to completely shift our thing like our perspective has has been Uh yeah. yeah, I think maybe to give you like a little bit more on like what specifically he is doing, <laughs> I think maybe the starting point mm-hmm. is um, looking for cases where there's an interaction with somebody that fits the description and then somebody's behavior changes in a weird way. Okay. Right? Yeah, Whereas, yeah, like, yeah. That was the key with the lawyer is like the lawyer talked to this kid and then started acting in this weird way. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I will say this, um, as, uh, as, as we, as we have this montage and we sort of pass over the month of like, you know, that like construction montage where like a bunch of boxes stack up and the boxes kind of come down and like the boards come up and like all the papers and all the lines get drawn and, and all the boxes get unpacked on the first floor and they all become like decorations and ornaments and that kind of thing. Um, and then we have the various moving in and outs, um, uh, montages as well for homes, um, we kind of like and like slow down to like present day, um, and you all are working inside the uh, this detective agency now. Art, have you changed the name? Is it still Ace of Spades Detective Agency? Hmm. I feel like we would change the name. Mm-hmm. I like the idea that we were planning on changing the name and then got in a huge fight over what we were going to name it. And we just like have, we like still like, it's like, we're going to rename it. Once we like figure it out, we're going to rename it. We just need to figure out the name and then we'll. But no one can figure it out, right? Yeah. Nobody and like every out. time we try to talk to each other about the name, we end up in a fight in our, and then we have to like table it. It's like no yeah. one's making headway. Let's talk yeah. about this later. Yeah. So also, you... I don't have any ideas. <laughs> yeah. So you've definitely argued over it several times, but it's still called the Ace of Spades. Um, so, uh, yeah, there's a zoomed in shot of Molly's mugs of Americanos going up and down. Um, so yeah, you are all inside, uh, the Ace of Spades detective agency. Um, you are all in the first floor, all in the, the primary office, um, uh, Artemis's office, as it were. Um, and you hear the telltale, like, thud against, um, the, the door down the end of the hallway, like the entrance door. Um, which would like, if you recall, it was the entrance to the street and then it was like a long row and it ended in Sam's old office. So you hear this like wood against the door uh, and you all know it's the telltale sign of um, like old school, a newspaper being thrown against the door, um, which happens, you know, every day 
Uh, it's it's the morning time. Uh, you hear that you are all in the office, kind of uh, bickering about whatever it is that you're going on. Like maybe it's a, a you know some new crack in the case that 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 Judd has, which is obviously not a real crack in the case. Um, and then Artemis <laughs> is trying to apply actual police work to it and not just conspiracy theories. And Molly comes in holding a tray of americanos to make everyone that much more hyper. Um, <laughs> yes, I made this you. I made you, I made you a coffee. Um, as she Thank brings it in there. Um, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so you hear this, like, thud noise against the door. Um, and you he- then, like, a minute or so goes by, and you hear that door open. And you hear, like, probably a chime, right? Because you don't want to be snuck up on. You hear, like, a ding ling as the door opens. Um, and you see uh, another officer um, from uh, your old precinct, uh, Artemis, mm. uh, is walking down towards you. Uh, this officer is probably, like, 20... 526, like young, youngish beat cop. Um, green in the gills, as they say. And he's holding a rolled up, like, tie with twine um, newspaper. Uh, and he kind of, like, walks up to the, the main office because Molly's not in, in her, like, normal office manager seat. Uh, and he just sort of stands outside the door and kind of on the door jam. <clears throat> uh, hello. Um, officer? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was told... Uh, uh, Officer Marinos? Uh, formerly Detective Marinos. Uh, hi. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, Art. Oh. Uh, she uh, takes the newspaper. I, I can, is that ours? Yeah, it, it was, it was, it was outside. Thank um, you. Um, I, I was, uh, I, I'm from the precinct 27. I, I was told, um, I was told you deal with weird stuff. She looks at Jed. I think yeah. Judd's still upstairs. You have to, like, calm down if you want, <laughs> want to. Judd, you're probably going to want to hear this. Yeah, we deal in... I mean, we're private investigators, but we take some um, abnormal cases, yes. Would you, would you like a seat? Do you need a drink? Uh, just tell her coffee? I don't need a coffee right now. It's not Molly, it's a client. Oh, <laughs> baby. Uh- Question mark. Get down here. Yep. Am I, yep. Am I interrupting something? No, we're weird little family here. You know how it is in the precinct with everybody. Then you know, it's well. You're. How long have you been an officer? Um, like a, a month and a half. Ah, so you're still figuring all that out. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. No one's this much of a family. I think uh, Judd comes, like, down the stairs, like, with a trail of smoke, smoking, like, uh, one, you know, rolled up cigarette, and then he sees there's a cop in the door, like, backs up the stairs, and then comes down with a, <laughs> with a machine rolled cigarette. <laughs> Perfect. Like, it's, for a second, you see the cop go, huh? <laughs> He's, must, be, um... must be someone outside. Yeah, uh, that that's our, he's like our, um, God, I really need to get him a title. He's, he's very good with uh, the, the digital stuff, the, the, the computer things for, you know, any private investigations we have. He's also uh, our security expert uh, as far as technology things. He's, you know, technology and he's was an investigative journalist before we set this place up. So he's, uh, he's oh, no, good at no. uh, helping no. us with. Go no, Polyakov at your service. No, ma'am. I, I know. I know Polyakov. Okay. No handshake. Do. He's uh. He was. He was the terrorist. He, I was not was, a terrorist. He was cleared of all that. He was not around his stuff when yeah, all that happened. Yeah, but it's it's one of those. If someone is believed to be a terrorist, the name kind of sticks. It's like maybe. He's a terror. Plus, uh, Captain O'Shaughnessy. Don't they teach you anything about the law where it, at cop cop school? Innocent until proven. I've been exonerated. I'm a Jesus Christ! What the absolute fuck? You come I, into I, my I can, but my, Judd, to Judd, be, to be fair, there was a lot of really incriminating things in your apartment, uh, s- sir. Judd, <laughs> she yeah, well, like, I bet gives you them there a look lot of like incriminating thoughts in your head, but I don't go, you know trying to accuse you of this, that, or the other. 
I saw Jared? how you were looking at Molly. Yeah, Jed, Jed, Jed. What? It's, take, <laughs> take a breath. I'm sorry. We, he's under the eye of this business. He is not going to be doing anything terroristic, or you know, as a former detective, it would be my duty to report such things, which is why everything is will oh. be going well. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. Uh, I'm. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I, I didn't mean to cause tension. I'm, I'm not actually here for him. Um, as long as you're. Perfect. As long as you're not a terrorist. Not a terrorist. Okay. Right, Jed. I think Jed just Jed just <laughs> like uh, like slowly nods and then like just blows a cloud of smoke in this guy's face. <laughs> okay. Okay. I I get it. I get it. Um, so. The officer here said he has something unusual for us. Uh, our favorite, right, Jen? Oh, I see. You got that? Uh, you actually might have something for me, I guess. Um, yes, and we'd like to build good relations with the PD. Of course. She makes a face at her um, So, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, this, this is like, it is, and it's not, um, uh, a PD thing, um, like like I'm I found I found something on my beat and like I'm I'm working I'm kind of working the case, um, like as much as I can be, but also it's 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 really weird, and I heard I heard that you guys deal with weird stuff. Yeah, well, well come come inside. I mean, we don't air conditioning. We don't like air conditioning outside, but you know, come in. But yeah, we'll we'll talk about it. Oh, all right, okay. Uh, he he comes in and he like kind of reaches back and like closes the door behind him. It's terrible for the environment, man. I mean, <laughs> he like looks at you and then like looks at the cigarette and looks back at you and he goes, "No, no, I know, I get it." <laughs> Why don't we have a seat at my the, desk? The or we have the little thing. seating area, whatever you would prefer. Officer. Oh, oh no, I'm 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 all set. I, I'll I'll take a seat though. Um, and he like sits okay. down in front of your desk. Um. And I feel and like the chair—the chair's just that far enough back away where he's like, there's like nowhere to like to lean onto, or like he's just yeah. far enough from the desk. And I feel like Judd has his own special chair that he's picked out that yeah. maybe doesn't match the Anything. rest of the room at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a lazy <laughs> boy in yeah. the office. <laughs> but that's where his chair is when clients come yeah. in. Like that's. Yeah, it's you know what it is. It's it's that old captain's chair you see in like offices that's been in the office for too too long. Where like the 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 arms are worn down and like there's the the, the tear in the corner where like and, and the, Molly's the like trying to put a doily on yeah. it and a nice pillow and to he cover it. Really, he clearly got it at like some estate sale or yeah. something. Like someone died in this chair. Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So he sits down and says, "Okay, so um." Uh, Okay, so this is I'm I'm not I'm not officially like here off the like, record. No. Anything yeah, you like, say here I'm, is I'm not authorized to be here for the um obvious reasons. And then he like kind of like looks down and you see like that quick second of like I shouldn't have come in uniform. Uh no, kind of no, no, wash no. over his face. Um, Look. Okay. So, um so there was a robbery. Um in the dock district and there's this sounds insane um there's no door anymore like no entrance to the building at all or just no yeah no yeah what like building the, like there used to be a door and now there isn't a door what building? Um, it's it's a warehouse building. I, I, I hold on. And he like pulls out his like you know flip pad. Um, yeah. It's in the dock district. Um, Here, write down the address. And Here. he like writes down the address. It's like the dock dock district's Pier Forty Two, Warehouse Thirteen, and like slides it across to you. And he says, "It's um, yeah, they're they're, like, it's a warehouse, right? So there. There were doors." Wait, and, like most buildings. And, right, that's what you would think. And now, there is there isn't a door. 
Um, like I, 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 I know, I know how this sounds, but would this address be familiar to us per se from like a month ago? No, different, no? different warehouse Dif- building. Different no. warehouse. Okay, so I'm gonna let Judd do his. Yeah, his it is. It is not. Googling. It is not that. Uh, that that warehouse. What? Um. Okay, we'll get to the lack of door. What? caused you to investigate this building were you in this building at any point before there were no doors um no i i got i got flagged down by the guy who owns the warehouse and he was reporting a robbery and what was robbed is the door i mean we think we can't see what else is in the building we can't get in there's no door Look, I know how this sounds. This sounds like what? I'm sent. I got sent here because I'm the new kid, and like this is like a practical joke. Haha! Get the old detective. But there's like, I don't know how else to put it. There's no door. Someone stole the door. And where the door was is like the material of the rest of the building now. Yeah, it's or... just a wall. Hmm. It's just four walls. Did the owner say what the uh, warehouse was for or what was inside of it? I I didn't really think to ask on account of the door being The stolen. door. Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. It's, okay. It's, it's not every day that, like, it's not ever, right? Right. right? No, I, I can't say I've had any missing door cases in my... Yeah. Okay. And, like, even if you had a missing door case, it's like someone stole a door from, like, like a door and then there's a hole but there's no hole it's okay it's like they stole the door and then bricked it back up who does that why would you brick it back up i don't know that is a very weird question um i obviously couldn't go back to the precinct with this because i'll get laughed out of i'll be on traffic duty and that's the worst yeah no it sucks i don't and i I can't not I can't not help the guy out with his burglary because it's a. I'm pretty sure it's a burglary. I don't. I, I can't imagine that person owned the door. It has to be a burglary. Right? What else could it be? And he like looks to Judd. Like he is as confused as he's got. Like, I, what else? <laughs> it's like a burglary, right? Like I don't. What else could it be? Steal. Uh, do you have a, a a name for this guy? Uh, phone number. Oh, just the uh, address. Shit. Yeah, hold on. And he like pulls out the pad again. Um. <laughs> Here. And he, he just has a phone number. Just has the phone number. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll give this guy a call. We'll look into it. Um, here's my card. Uh, just shoot, shoot me a text. Sure. Yeah, we'll yeah, let no, you I'll, know I'll, what we find. I mean, and he, if... he, like, unbuttons Quick and pockets it. Yeah. As, um... Did anyone see a kid around there before it all happened? Um... He like Jed like describes the you know the the trashy you know teen that uh, has been involved in a bunch of stuff. Um, I am new, and I don't I don't really uh, and like he like side eyes uh, Artemis for a second, and like kind of bad at your job. Got no, it. I, you don't know. I, I, okay. I don't, no, I don't. I don't work in a. I don't work in a place that has like uh, cameras. It's not. Yeah, when they're first starting out, they don't get a lot of stuff, and even then, I had to buy a lot of my stuff. I was, you know. Yeah, it, it's not a great part of, of the docks area. I mean, the docks are pretty shitty anyway. Um, usually, we get sent here because there's not much harm we can do. Preventative policing is usually what they call Until it. They see a the cop, uh, things are less likely to happen. Yeah. Until obviously they do. Got it. So you're bad at your job, and the department's fucked. Okay, um, we're on the same page. Yeah, I'm, I'm new uh, at my job. I guess he's he's new. Give him a break, Judd. We need to <laughs> we need these kind of people down the line. Okay. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at this. We'll uh, here write your number down. She hands him a notepad, not unlike his own. <laughs> yeah, he writes he writes his own phone number down, so you can you can uh, contact him as well. I'll uh. I'll let you know if we find anything, and uh, you know if you hear anybody else with a case like this or something you're not sure about looking into, please do come back to us. We uh, appreciate 
appreciate it. We do appreciate it. you coming by, Scooter. It, it, it's, Scooter. it's Alec. I'm going to call you Scooter. Okay. I, Thank you, Alec. <laughs> if there's any other details or things you forgot, just, you know, call or text me on that number you got right there. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, uh, this was a mistake. Uh, and he starts to, like, wander <laughs> out of the building. And you can hear him, like, he, like, opens the door and just, like, adds it mindedly, like, leaves it open a little bit. And he's like, who still has a door? Like, how do you even, what are the logistics of, like, how do you get the door? How did no one hear it? Like, pull it. Who, why? As he's, like, walking down. Like, this has ruined his week, right? Yeah. <laughs> someone has stolen a door. And it's the most ridiculous case. Maybe someone played a prank on me. I don't know. <laughs> We have to be nice to even the dumb ones because they usually tell us more than the smart ones. <laughs> yeah, even but if it's, it's ridiculous. It's just so hard. It's I know. just so hard. Uh, <sighs> so is is there any chance that the department's just fucking with this kid? Because I mean, it sounds like he was down there himself. So, so we should call this guy and head down there, or head down there and then call the guy. What are you feeling? I say we head down there, and uh, we call him on the way. Sounds good to me. Okay. Um, what? Uh, what? Is, what are you all driving? Oh, that's a good that question. Got his car back, right? You did get your car back. He yeah. has his car. I, I think. I, <laughs> I feel like Art would have gotten them something nice for work, though. Like yeah. A, a, mm-hmm. A nice SUV or a nice town car. Probably she'd lean towards the, the SUV to look a little more yeah. business like. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, Maybe an air freshener too because of the smoking. <laughs> one of like the uh, the air purifiers with like the, the HEPA filters in them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because of the smoking. Um, <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, you guys, you guys uh, make your way down the hallway. You know, you you hop in the the the, uh, the SUV um, and begin heading down towards the dock section. Are you calling him, this guy on your way there, or what's the um, what's the plan here? Uh, yeah. Um, did, it, were we given the name? No. It was no, the kid just had a number. Uh, so Art's gonna call him and be like, hi, we're, you know, I'm with the, and she stutters as she realizes they still don't have a name, uh, the, the Ace, uh, the, <laughs> God damn it. Uh, we're a detective agency and we heard you were having a door problem. Um, we were, uh, wondering if we could come take a look, see if we could help you out. Uh, yeah, you hear, like, what is easily Judd's dad. Right, you hear, like, yeah, what, what, fucking, of course I had a fucking door problem. I came to work today, and in my warehouse, the warehouse I own, I've owned it the whole time. There's always been a door. There's two doors. There's like one door you walk in like a regular kind of person. There's another door. It's a garage door. Like it opens up, so you can get shit in a warehouse. It's a warehouse. You know how warehouses work. And there's no doors. Yeah. Two doors. Who steals a door? How do you even steal a door? This is multiple doors. Okay. This is oh. who do you work for? You're a detective agency. How did you find this? Who told uh, you about the doors? No one knows a, about this. We got a tip. Uh, from a concerned individual in the neighborhood, and we're, uh, you know, when investigating start... unusual cases. <laughs> oh, so when a random door... person came up to you and told you that I had a door stolen. Boom. Bang up job. That's the criminal. No one else knows that I have a door stolen. It's me and the criminal. They should probably, should probably catch that guy. Okay, look here, fucko. If a door goes ahead and disappears, sometimes people are going to talk about it, all right? So people talk, and then we heard about it. Oh, real Makes fucking sense? professional, fucko. What is this kind of, what kind of detective agency you running here, miss, little miss, you and your fucking boyfriend running a detective agency out of your oh, truck? Oh, 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 he is definitely not my boyfriend. Look, sir, we all have different personalities, which is why we get into situations with uh, different kinds of cases. Look. I apologize for my friend. She shoots Judd a look. A little customer service would be nice. <laughs> Alright, well, listen. Here's the address. You and your choochie friend can come down here and take a look at where my doors used to be that are now just bricks, okay? And then we can discuss who may or may not have stolen the door and how you let him get away. And maybe your friend gets a free sandwich uh, made of knuckles. Either way, I'll see you when you get here. Doc, 40, Pier 42... District, I mean, uh, warehouse thirteen or whatever the fuck it is. I don't even care. Uh, boop, and then he like hangs up on you. And like as he's hanging up, you go, "Fucking steals! Who's fucking? It's a door! It's a hole! What do you mean you didn't see anyone?" 
Boop. And the phone call ends. <laughs> Jen, am I going to have to leave you at the office to talk to people? <laughs> Look, Art, She's here's what you got to understand. Some people don't respond well to niceness. Some people are assholes, and you got to treat them like assholes. That's true. Some people are assholes. I... You, John is one of the people. <laughs> let's, let, let's find a, ba- a, a nice balance of asshole and like. That's the. He just that's shakes your, her that's head. Your tombstone and... is some people are assholes, and you gotta treat them like assholes. <laughs> Judd. <laughs> Fine. Look, I, I don't want us to get a bad reputation right off the gate. Okay, we should eventually make money from this. Yes, you would like to have things. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Uh, I think I think like while we're talking, Judd is like is like fiddling with the radio. He puts on the song, <laughs> uh, song. Uh, um, oh man, what what song would he put on? Uh, <laughs> he's just gonna put on something, some sort of like loud punk music that that is just like dr- trying to trying to drown out Artemis. Perfect, perfect. Um, yeah, so you guys easily navigate the city uh, with this pounding punk rock music blasting um, and a cloud of cigarette smoke angrily puffing from the passenger seat uh, as you pull up to the, the dock district. Um, now, the dock district, as you know it, uh, is, is not the friendliest place on the best of times um, and uh, some of the most unfriendly places on the worst of times. Um, and you pull up to one of the seedier sides, where, like, you know, buildings are a little rusty, you know, there's less less signage on buildings, there's no, like, certain certain just piers have no number on them. Um, you know, this is the kind of place where you'd pull in an unmarked boat um, if you needed to offload some packages. Um, so you make your way down to uh, Pier uh, 42, um, to Warehouse 13, and you see this guy who is 5'2", uh, he's, he's built like if you took a pig and made him walk on his back two feet. Um, and he has like, uh, like balding in the front, like the whole like top is balding and he just has this, like this, this, you know, hair around the side. It's kind of like scraggly. Um, he has suspenders on, um, what, what could be a tablecloth could be a checkered shirt is sort of like a little bit popping on the, the buttons and barely tucked in. Um, as he has, like, a, a pair of, like, old, well-worn jeans uh, with, like, a massive dad wallet. Um, and you see that he has, like, what is probably a dollar store cigar uh, that he's chewing on and sort of, like, bouncing between left and right side of his mouth as he's yelling at the, the, the dock workers um, who are, you know, all, all generally speaking in their, their like, their mid-30s, uh, relatively in shape, having to carry boxes all the time. These guys are covered in sweat. This guy has a, occasionally dabs a rag out of his back pocket and wipes it and then puts it back in there. Uh, and he's like, yeah, just fucking stack all the boxes wherever the fuck you want. It's not like we can put them in our fucking warehouse because someone stole the door because you guys don't know how to fucking do anything as he's just like yelling at his entire crew, right? Um, as you guys pull up uh, to see this this scene. Um, yeah, what are you guys, uh, what are you guys doing? Hmm. Get out of the car. Uh, yes. I'll just walk up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. J- J- Art's gonna follow him and see what happens at this point. Yeah. So he he I think he's still like in mid like berating, um, before he even like registers that you guys are there, and he turns around and he goes, "Oh, what the fuck do you guys want? What are you here to fucking steal another door? What is this? Who who are you?" What? Yeah, I'm here to steal your door. No, oh, it's this fucking fuckwad. Okay, what Look, do you want, little man? We wanted to check out your building, see if we could uh, figure out who took your door. Doors. Yeah. Take a lap around, Missy. You'll see where the doors aren't anywhere. And he like Can motions you... to the building. <laughs> uh, which sides were they on previously? Just out of curiosity. This side with the water. Right here gotcha. is the mm-hmm. side with the garage door for unloading and offloading. And the side right around to the left of it, that's where personnel walk in, you know. Okay. He's like, if you look to uh, that warehouse or that warehouse or that warehouse or that warehouse, they all look right. pretty much the same. <laughs> you see how that one has a door? 
and a garage door, like an overhead, and that one has the same two, and this one has none. Have yes. You, have you tried sending anyone through the window? We don't have windows. Yeah, this is kind of one of those brick and mortars. They just toss it down, and you know. You yeah. don't have any kind of top. They don't have any ventilation at all. Yeah, on the roof. Yeah, well. We mean get like a sixty foot ladder and climb the roof. It's called it. I mean, I assume that you would use a lift, but. Yeah, the lift that's inside the fucking warehouse for moving crates in and out of the warehouse. How would well, I get um... in there? We'll, we'll take we'll a look. Jump <laughs> nibbly pimbly from rooftop to rooftop <laughs> over to mine and just slide down like I'm a fireman in the fire hole. Not an option. Yeah, you could use the exercise. Oh, listen here, Bucko. She's gonna push Judd towards the door. Why don't you start looking? I, I, I would like to ask you a few more questions. Look, I, we I'll all have a, I'll our make a um... spin off of these two. <laughs> Can I ask you what kind of business you do down here, sir? I'm just Yeah, can I ask you idea. what kind of business you're running with this fucking asshole? Just ra- flapping his gums over here like some kind of chooch, doing he's whatever he wants? tech guy, all right? He's not really good at the social bit. I'm, um... and clearly. Should socially shut his mouth. That's what I think. What was your question, miss? I, 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 I don't listening. disagree with you. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's... He's a bit much, and he, like, bites her tongue for a second. Like, God, I mean, they're the, both a bit much. He's the kind of guy that goes for a swim and just fucking hits his head on a rock and doesn't come up. But that's just, that's just what I, that's just my experience. But, like, I wouldn't know anything about that. Uh, of course what, not. What, uh, what was your question, uh, little lady? Uh, I was just asking what kind of business you were running here. Well, if you had any enemies, any, any kind of information like that, that. You know, this is still kind of a weird thing for somebody to do to you, but uh, the questions I gotta ask, you know. Uh, yeah, it's like a, it's like an import export business. Ah, uh, any product in particular, or just no. Gotcha. Like we import uh, crates, and then we export crates. Don't really take a look at what's inside. Just do what you gotta do. Yeah. No, they're mostly unmarked crates, and they sort of come in port like import off the water and then they exit export out of the doors that we used to have that you don't currently have so that's a problem yeah yeah see that? gotcha yeah and now if i leave my unmarked crates out here now it looks like they're free unmarked crates that anyone could take and that's not the kind of thing that i want i don't want everyone taking my crates they're my crates right and i need them for business we'll see if we can break in the roof or something. Uh, do you know if there was anything in your current inventory that might have been a bit hotter than you were led to believe? Uh, you know, there could have been some really, like, really nice uh, unmarked crates like that were made out of mahogany or like, a, you know, some so kind no, of South African no timber or something like that. No. Okay. They're unmarked for a reason, I'll face. I don't look inside of them. I just import them and then I export them. And then, gotcha. you know, you know. Yeah, I won't. Uh, I don't want to disturb your business. I'm just here to see what happens, see if I can help. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you catch a door thief, you know, maybe he can go for a swim. Maybe he likes to swim. Who knows? All sorts of swimming. She hands him a card. This is my phone number. If you, if you remember anything else weird or strange that happened before, if somebody keeps coming around and checking your lack of doors that isn't out of the ordinary, whatever, just. Yeah. Shoot me a collar text. Sure. Yeah. Oh, is this, uh, this Marinos? Like, you Yeah, that's my name, my father's name. Like, Big D's kid? Yeah, I'm his daughter. All right, well, you tell your friend to watch his mouth. And he, like, pockets the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he pockets the, uh, the card. <laughs> gotcha. Okay, keep Marino. Man, we might need to put that in the name as she walks <laughs> quietly towards <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> Marino's detective agency just to <laughs> quiet some people uh, down. Uh, so, Judd, as this exchange is going on and you have time to walk around the building, what are you doing? I would <laughs> like to investigate the places where there are no longer doors. Okay, roll me an investigation um, and let me know what you're rolling. <clears throat> yeah, so I w- I'm trying to, like, uh, in- investigate what kind of magic it was at play here, basically. Okay. Um, well, I didn't mean to roll that. Uh, we can take that if we want to, but uh, I will have stuff. Um, 
So I'm like basically trying to like look at like what magic destroyed these doors. Yeah. Um, and uh, I would like to use um, seasoned investigator. I'll take it. I would like to use fire of creation and destruction. I'll take it. And uh, 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 maybe knows where the bodies are buried. I'll take it. Yeah, for for cool. for like you know knowing knowing where to look. Kind mm -hmm. of yeah. Uh, go ahead and roll me that with those three. Okay, so a mild success on an investigate. Okay, so some of your some of your questions are going to have some fuzzy answers. So you get three clues to ask me. So three questions that I have to answer, um, and uh, yeah, they might be they might be fuzzy. They might expose you to danger, or uh, I get to ask mm -hmm. a question about you. So let's let's hear these. Um. <clears throat> Was this the work of an individual or a group? Um, you, hmm. from what you can tell, it doesn't look like um, the bricks were laid by people. Um, so it's hard to determine how many people it would take to do this. It doesn't look like they were actually laid. Like if you touch the, the, the mortar, just the mortar in between them, um, it's not like fresh. It's not like new mortar. It's not like someone could push this down and like open up. Like it, 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 it basically matches the exact rest. Like if you run your hand across the whole side of the building, it feels the same. Um, so mm -hmm. it's difficult to tell how many people it took to do this because uh, it doesn't look like it was physically done. Uh, Even the paint matches. This may not be a question I can even ask, but sure. if possible, I would like to know like um, something about the mythos at play here. Mm. Like if if Judd can figure out like obviously with a seven, it's probably not going to be like a name of a mythos, but maybe like the domain or like like kind of like the type of of. Uh, like the the general like uh, either you know like domain of the deity or like you know is this a, a folk hero trickster is this a, you know what I mean like mm -hmm, that kind mm -hmm. of general information. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So let's play it like this, right? So you find the spot, right? Um, you find the spot where the door should be, which is a difficult task by itself. Uh, but because you know where the bodies are buried, you know what to look for, and there is just the tiniest seam of where a door once was. And as you're kind of like feeling along this area and kind of like touching different bricks and like touching the mortar and trying to like figure out what it is, you like put your hand on it. And for a second, like you're, you, you have like this, like this flash, like almost like you see like a, a quick, like fire, right? Um, which is something that you're like kind of getting used to seeing uh, as you're creating things. And what you see for the briefest glimpse is a door that existed and then you just see, like, you hear, like, a, a whoop, like a bubble pop. And then there is a wall. So this wall was created instantaneously. And it, like, popped out of nowhere. Um, that's kind of what you get off of that information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as if maybe magic of some kind? Like, that's, it seems like a magical thing, right? And then last but not least... Uh, I kind of want to ask if there's any signs of the kid, but I feel like the way I'm investigating is not likely to find that. Um, mm. Any signs of the kid? I uh, guess, so I guess instead of that, I'll do like, um, is there anything that like I'm missing that like, like is easy to overlook here? Like the, what's the easy, the best detail here? Yeah, so I'll give you this. I, uh, a as you kind of peruse the scene and you're like looking for, like you're you're actively looking for some kind of clue here that stands out. Um, you see, uh, you see a a a candy wrapper and a slushy cup, um, 
from the 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 six twenty three um, on the ground. Hmm. Which does not match the food that you know decently burly dock workers are are eating and drinking. Um, no, not generally. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I guess I'll just walk back to uh, um, Art and share that information and then probably just be like, uh, you can take a look if you want, but honestly, I'm not sure we're going to get fuck all from just wandering around looking at this lack of wall. Yeah, and uh, it doesn't sound like this business is... Uh wholly on the up and up, so we either need to uh, get inside or I don't know. There's still something that ain't sitting right here. Um, the Just for, for reference, the 623 is a local convenience store. That's open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's open six days a week, 23 hours a day. Um, so yeah, that's where that so that the Slurpee is from there. Mm-hmm. We can also hit up this convenience store and see if they remember anybody. But yeah, hmm. it's worth a try. I am. I'll tell you what I think. Okay. I think that whatever is going on here any random folks that may have seen it won't remember seeing it. Squints at him a little. Okay. I think it's going to be just like what went on with the Hermie situation. Ah, uh, okay. Most folks, the wool's going to be pulled over their eyes. Well, don't you think it's worth trying to get in, seeing if they mess with things, touch boxes, left any other sort of evidence. I think going inside is probably our best bet, but it might be right. dangerous. Well, I mean, it's been, what, 20? I don't know how long the guy said the, the robbery was yesterday. It's been 24 hours. I don't imagine somebody's still in there unless they're going through all the crates, which I don't Unless whoever got rid of the doors wasn't trying to keep something out. They were trying yeah. to keep something in. He doesn't really have a manifest, so it's kind of a go in and look type of situation. And, um, well, hopefully you know how to put back together crates, because I'm going to figure it out quickly. <laughs> um. All right look around, try to find a, a, a ladder or talk to one of the, the local other businesses around to borrow a, a ladder. Uh, yeah, sure. You want to try to go in this building right now? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's see. Uh, let's, let's, let's go with this. Roll me a convince okay. um, as, you're, as you're trying to borrow a ladder from somebody. This this warehouse isn't what you would call up to code, um, right. and so there there is no like fire to the roof access kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. No, I figured we're gonna have to get a big honking ladder yeah. and then figure it out from there. Um, I think get into the suspect's head. She's gonna try to sell this to like you know this guy got broken into you could be next i'm just trying to you know yeah. handle this before cops come snooping around you know nobody yep. wants that i did it <laughs> especially with you know unmarked crates around yeah yep uh commands reverence i'll take it i really think anything else fits too much um photographic memory Maybe she's going to say their names over and over again and mention things she sees around their building just to kind of give them a, okay, hey, like that, I'm that paying fam- attention. Yeah, yeah, that familiarity kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take that. I'll, 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 you, you sold me. So roll me a convince with a plus three. 
Great. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So it takes a couple people um, to to convince to to get a ladder, but you are eventually uh, eventually given a twenty foot extension ladder, uh, which should get you to the roof. Um, you may be you know a few inches short, mm. but it should get you where you need to be. All right. Um, I'm gonna go first just in case there's a surprise up there. Uh, Judd, you <laughs> just kind of like I'll hold the ladder. <laughs> Right, and if you want, I'll let you know if it's clear. <laughs> this is what she decides on. And she can't really guy, decide what Judd's. And if the guy asks you, is. the guy with the cigar asks you if you want to swim, say no. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, no swimming. Just yeah. Uh, yeah, so you, you pull the rope, extend the ladder up there, it sort of like grabs onto the wall, um, and you're able to, you know, scroll your way up to the top of the, the roof. Um, you see what you would expect to see. It's a shit-covered roof, um, seagulls, etc. Um, there's a tipped-over owl statue, which is meant to keep the birds off of there, um, and you see three, mm. like, center line, um, like the plastic bubble domes, uh, skylights. Um, and each one of them has a, a lock like a like a like a padlock locking them closed, uh, but you see these bubbles, you know, spaced equally distant apart, just one line of them across like the center of the warehouse. I'm gonna go look in one of the bubbles. Okay, um, and maybe um, she writes up the owl just because. Sure, uh, yeah. So you 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 find the least shit covered spot on the owl and sort of perch it back up on the, the side of the thing. Um, and you head over to the first bubble. Uh, what you can see on these bubbles is that all of them are kind of, like, yellowed in, like, that sun bakes kind of thing. Um, yeah. But you can kind of, like, get a little, like, elbow grease on there and, and see down. Um, and what you see through, like, a very, like, dusty, dim, like, beam of light coming down is a warehouse. It looks like a completely nondescript warehouse. There's no lights on. It's completely dark except for what little illumination is coming through these these bubble domes. Uh, but like as you kind of like look through for like you know a minute or two, there's no movement in there. Um, in fact, you don't really see anything. Mm. I want to attempt to lockpick one of the things. Yeah. Do you have a lockpick? Yes, because I'm always prepared. Okay, cool. So then, <laughs> so then you, you It's a skill I have. Great. Then describe <laughs> to me how you how you pick this lock. Um, no, no roll needed. I believe you. You believe me? Okay. Um, she's gonna go at it gingerly. She's not trying to like completely destroy the lock. She's just trying to pop it open. So sure. She can open one of the things and have a look down. See if there's any good way to get down. Yeah. Yeah, if, if American TV has taught us anything, it's that all good cops carry lockpicks on them. So you kind of get in there <laughs> and pop that lock, and you see that it like clicks open, and you can see lock. this easy, easy little master lock. You pop it off, and then it takes a bit of it takes a bit of strength to like pop open this bubble, but the whole thing like hinges open like a like the lid of a chest, right? Uh, so, but you can kind of like slide this thing open, and now a, a beam of light comes through. Um, and what you notice is, despite the beam of light, it's still very dark in there. Um, uh, and again, you look down, and now you get a much clearer picture. From what you can see, I mean, just like kind of like leaning over and looking down, not not tipping your head in too far. Uh, it looks like an empty warehouse. Empty. Like, empty. Oh. <laughs> like none of the the machinery nope. there. None of the boxes. What, what you can see empty? is the only thing in this is there's a catwalk that rings the outside, and then underneath each of the bubble lights is a, like, the catwalk connects from one side to the other side, right? So imagine a catwalk that goes square around and with, like, cross sections. Um, so there's three cross beams where the bubbles are. So if you wanted to, you could slip down and, like, hold yourself and then drop a good four feet and land on grating, but you'd have yeah. no way back up um, because there's no doors. Uh, <laughs> Art's, Art's going to kind of, like, call uh, Judd on her phone. Um, so I'm a First off, our friend is not going to be happy. There, there is, does not look like there's much in here. Second off, um, I've decided I'm going to hop in to see if there's anything else. I may need help getting out. <laughs> uh, Roger that. She's going to climb up the ladder. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Um, maybe reposition the ladder so they could they can get out. But she's yeah. uh, just going to hop in, 
get her flashlight out, start the start checking the catwalk, and then. Uh, okay, cool. So I, I feel would like there would be a ladder down. Uh, the into the, the into ground? the oh yeah, from the catwalk to the ground for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like Judd gets up to the top of the thing, and then you see like uh, you see Artemis's head and hands as she like lowers herself down, and then you see her let go, and you hear like a clang, oof, as you kind of land on the catwalk. Uh, and yeah. then Judd's able to like get down there and see you on the catwalk uh, as you kind of you know unholster your flashlight, start to beam around here um, and look around. Um, there is nothing in this warehouse. You kind of take a lap around the um, the the catwalk itself, uh, mm-hmm. maybe slide down the ladder. This looks like it's empty, like there's nothing was ever here. Um, there are no. Um, there's no, like, forklifts, there's no, like, pallets, there's no lifts, there's no boxes, there's no unmarked crates or marked crates. There is nothing in here, uh, except for, like, swirling, you know, the, the, the dusk, like, particles swirling in the beam of light. Hmm. Hmm. From, uh, what he told us, there was a bunch of stuff in here, right? Starting to think that the doors disappearing were just a distraction. Yeah, but how did they get all the shit out of here without the doors? Same way they took the doors, I'd assume. <sighs> do you want to tell them, or do I have to tell them? <laughs> I mean, neither of us have to tell him. He's not a client. You're not a cop. He might be a client here in a second. We tell him all of his shit's stolen. Well, I mean, when we when you first brought me in, the deal was that I would not have to do any client acquisition. So that's uh that's your job. You're in charge of outreach. I'm I'm just the worker. Fair enough. <laughs> all right. Let's. She shakes her hand. Let's get back down on the ground, Mom. She snaps a few pictures. Uh. Tell him the bad news. <laughs> she uh, she tapped. Oh god, I'm muted. Oh, so you're you, not, not you, you, sure. you climb yeah. the ladder to the catwalk. How do you plan on getting out? Oh, I had Judd put the ladder from. The oh, so you pulled the ladder up to... off of the yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, off yeah. of the ground. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, he's as as he kind of gets the ladder down into this this hole. Um, you are making your way up, uh, and. Uh, because we hit that lovely corruption bar, you oh, no. hear like a low <sighs> in the warehouse. You're sure you swept the warehouse. Uh, and she just <laughs> looks at Judd. Judd, you didn't hear anything. Judd's just like, uh, what, what's wrong? I heard a noise. There's something in here. Uh, what is it? Uh, all I heard was a l- low growl. May want to start climbing the ladder. You hear that same noise again, Art. Now you hear it from two distinct angles inside the warehouse. Oh no. <laughs> it's still below uh, you. It's not on the catwalk, but you hear it from two separate sides of the warehouse. Like there are happens? multiple things. When I, I flash my flashlight down. Do I so as that? you kind of beam your flashlight down, um, you begin to like sweep. I assume you have like a, a decently powered like cop mag oh, yeah. light, right? Oh, fuck so you, yeah. So <laughs> you kind of sweep down. It's still a good 10 feet to the ground below you. So if you're sweeping like the walls, it's a good, it's a good 20 plus feet, depending on where you are or where you're sweeping. Uh, but as you kind of sweep, it's, it's like... It's like when you see something move on like your peripherals. You're you're sweeping this 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 kind of beam across the thing, and you could have sworn just outside that like conical light beam, something moved right before you hit it, or something moves right after you pass by something. Right? It's never in the light, but it's always around the light that you think you saw some kind of movement. Hmm. You hear the noise again. There are three distinct locations. And it's not the same 
Like it's it's it, if you like focus on it, it's three distinctly tonally different noises. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get what you mean. All the same I'm just sound. But trying different. to decide how much of an idiot I want to be. Yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> I would like to flood the room with light. Okay. Um yeah, I, I would imagine at this point she would be like, there are things in here, I can't see them. Roll me a change the game. I will do so. Okay. Just for you. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, I have the following tags. Yeah, I have too. fire of creation and destruction. I'll take it. I have... Um... Just the wrath of flame. I'll take it. I'll take it. I can see that hook that applies. Um, mm-hmm. and humanity's champion. I'll take it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm basically just trying to make like a like a, it's like a, a miniature like it, it would basically like look like it was like a mini sun hanging in the yeah, air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like pure light, right? Yeah. It's not like I don't want like an actual sun that like gives off a bunch of heat. Yep. You know? <laughs> I get you. Please don't catch me on fire. Yeah, I'm not trying to burn down the warehouse, but um, but yeah, sunburst magic. Whatever. Yeah, so you got a plus three on that roll. Um, I don't think I should. Great success. I need, um, your, I need to look at your now, name weakness tags. if I remember correctly, I may... I think one of mine, when I change the game, I get extra bonus points. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I use my... But that's only on a dynamite, which is a 12 plus. Uh, oh, that's also only when I hit with all I've got. Yep. Okay. Um, cool. So you create this thing. Okay, so let's play this by the rules, as it were. Uh, so you get a 10 plus, which means you get a bunch of things. So create a story tag. Burn a tag. Not applicable. Reduce a status. May be applicable. Scale up the effect. Prolong the effect. Hide the effect. Or something else we discuss. So you're going to immediately Can create I... a story tag, I would say. Yeah, assume. so I want to create this story tag. Yep. Um, uh, like, um, uh, mass illumination, yep. let's just say. Yep. Uh, and I'll just scale it up for two. Okay, so you're going to make it... So scale it up makes it... Yeah, okay, so you're going to spend the other two to make it bigger. Bigger, okay. Uh, well, wait, let me just double check that there isn't something that would be more useful. I think that's probably... I think that makes sense. You could prolong the effect to make it last longer. Um, yeah, let's do... It... I'll scale it up to two and then prolong it. Okay, cool. Um, Basically, yeah, I just so... want it to stay until I'm done with it. So like what stuff. does it look like? Uh, this is one of the first times you've used your abilities in front of someone else who is advancing on their track of mythos uh, and in plain sight of no one else. So what does this look like as Judd, like, fully is not hindered by the mist? Yeah, um, so there's, like, a a flash of, um, like, something in his eyes, this, like, uh, uh, this burning power, right? And he... Uh, will like point out with two fingers and uh like a like almost like shooting out firework it like shoots out and then Mm -hmm. like blossoms into this like uh basically it's like a a a, a, like a a golden sun yeah uh, you know like a noonday sun it just sort of like hanging in the sky in the air uh at the top of this uh warehouse okay um yeah, so you, you you know, you stick the two fingers and then it, pew, you see this, like like you said, the firework kind of to go, it explodes uh, like a small, like, soundless. Like, I, I, I'm imagining it's like a soundless, like, mm-hmm. like uh, blooming of light. And then uh, I'll, it, instead of like a what you would think of as like an explosion of like yeah. like fire or sparks, yep. it's like, um, you know, that like effect where if you're viewing sunlight through a window at yeah. the right angle, it's just like that glittering rainbow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yep, just like perfect. this glittering rainbow and then it illuminates the whole Yeah, thing. hell yeah, it does. Um, great. So yeah, you, pew, this thing happens. No sound comes up, but pew, this blinding light. Um, Artemis kind of has to like shield her eyes unexpected as you see this pew, kind of thing happen. Um, and while Art is getting her sight back, uh, Judd, you're looking down and you can see You've extended the light pool of this thing. Um, it only goes so far, and at the edges of it, like around the edge of the interior of the building, there is still a, enough shadow. You see, you're pretty sure it's like in the neighborhood of a dozen, maybe, of Thanks. these like 
four-legged creatures on all fours that seem to be like not amorphous they have a shape like a shape like a dog but it's like they're continuously like moving as if like they're made of water maybe or like smoke the way like if smoke is building up and you kind of move your hand through it it kind of like changes and like moves around they have that kind of effect and they are held at bay by whatever this light is they are unable to penetrate this beam of light that you've made um anything beyond that i will need an investigation check that's what you see immediately uh can i investigate because i'm I'm a little bit closer yeah you totally can uh danger sense yep what about nature sense um the animal likeness of these critters or no I, I'm I will, fine with no. I'm just I will, curious. I will give you nature sense. Yeah. Okay. And... At the very least, it would be useful if it was like, no, these are not a nature thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even exactly. that is, is useful yeah, in this yeah, yeah. Case, I think. I'm going to use survival of the fittest. To investigate... You I think that one's on going to come into play when we are subsequently dealing with this issue. But. Yeah. yeah. Let me see. Let me see what else you've got. Um, um, uh, no. I don't really think anything else uh, applies. Nope. That's fine, though. Nature sense, aspect of nature, survival of the fittest. Yeah, I think, I think th- those, those two work. Um, yeah, so roll me a uh, roll me, uh, plus two. Why don't I investigate? 12 so great good at success. Investing. Okay, so you have two <laughs> questions you can ask me, and I have to be truthful with you. Mm. There's nothing else in the room but these things. Is that a question? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> form of a question, please, Alex. Um, so you look around, and as your eyes kind of readjust, and you can hear the this like noise, you see what's creating them now, uh, and and how you are seeing multiple or hearing multiple angles of this thing. Um, and as you kind of scan and let your vision kind of come back to normal, um, in the same way that. Judd saw like the faint outline of where the door was you see in this hella bright light there's a faint like outline like like a seam right like if you put two pieces of paper together there's a perfect circle in the dead center of this warehouse as if it was popped into place just like the doors It's just like the doors. Oh, fuck. Um. What happens when I flash my light on one of them in the uh, darkness? Okay, cool. So yeah, you do, and you see it like, man. How do I want to explain this? Um, <laughs> it's like you ever see Terminator Two with the liquid metal guy? Yes, I okay. have not seen That's the movie. The I know so, what you were so, referring. Yeah, so you know when he gets like shotgunned and like splits apart and then sort of comes back together. Oh, when you beam so them, they like split apart, and you can see like almost like two of the heads form. And as you kind of pass over, it like forms back together. Or, like, you'll see it, like, split into another one of the creatures and then, like, pull back out kind of thing. They seem to be able to, like, merge and maneuver their parts around. Okay. Those are your two questions. What do you do? They're held at bay for now. You have no idea how long Judd's flashbang will work, but... Yeah. They are. You're currently... You're currently safe. But now I want to investigate that circle. I know. <laughs> Judd, I got a bad feeling about this, but I would want to go down there. All right, I'll try to keep him off of you as long as I can. So I would like to do this. Yeah? Uh, can I change the game again to try to uh, 
like affect my my thing more like to like do more stuff with so the... your thing is a story tag that can be used in something else right so it's there narratively and it's going to last the entire scene right um but like if you need to use it to like defend uh artemis you can use it as a plus one an additional plus one to do that um, gotcha. So what else would you like to do with it? Would it be a plus two? Because I spent. Two yes, spares. it would be a plus two. Correct. Sorry, because you leveled it up. But that would burn the tags. It would burn the tag, as in you can't use it again to roll. But the the narrative device of the light would still stay there. Okay, then I'll I'll wait. I'm, I'll just tell tell uh, Artemis that I'm I'll keep him off of her. And okay. Then yeah. I'm waiting. Great. Um, so Art, what are you doing? I'm gonna keep a. Flashlight in one hand, and I'm gonna pull my gun out. Okay. Um, which, I mean, let's be honest, also has a flashlight on. Yep. yep. <laughs> it's got one of the under the under barrel flashlights. Oh yeah, which she has turned on at this point. Yep. Um, I I assume she's just gonna have to like try to Spider Man her way down because the, the ladder would be in the dark. I'm assuming based on uh, the ladder is close to the dark. Um, you're pretty sure you can get because I mean the so basically the light burst is in the middle so the closest yeah. ladder is like in the light but like a foot behind it is the dark. Um, okay. So you're She's pretty gonna, sure you're safe. Gonna gonna go for it okay. and head towards that uh head towards that circle. Great. So you you do that that sweet combat slide where you down the side yeah. of the thing. Oh yeah. You know hit the <laughs> ground superhero style and head over to this circle. When you get there. What do you do? How are you interacting with this? Um, I think she, she's got her gun and her flashlight out. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, just to keep anything that might come close at bay. Because so far, all she knows is it re- reacts to light. Yeah. That's all she's got. Um, I take a closer look at the circle, see if it's like uh, they went into the sewers or if there's any sort of mm. like... So if all this is you an can... exit, or if it, it's just... Sure, sure. So as you get closer, all you can see is... Like, imagine if um, imagine if someone, like, cored out, like, a hole, and then refilled it with, like, identical cement, right? So mm. all it looks like is, like, just this, this tiniest little seam um, in a perfect circle. There's no other markings on it. The, it's, it's all filled in. There's no hole down. So it's, it's just, like, the doors outside where, like, there was no door, and then, boom, there's a wall. Um, so what there, either someone made a hole here and then filled it back in, or there was a hole here and someone filled it in much like the doors, okay. um, but it looks like a perfect circle, like a very thin line of a perfect circle. I think I found the way in and out. Not sure what's underneath this building, but, the uh, might need to take a look. Judd, you hear this from down below. Yeah, I'll, I'll start going down to, to... Yeah, take a look. Okay, so you climb down the ladder, uh, attempt Judd's coolest version of sliding down the the <laughs> the other ladder as well. Uh, less graceful of a landing, I feel like. And the 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 light beam stays up there, uh, and you approach this circle again. And, it, 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 and again, you since you've seen the door seams on the outside, this looks identical to you. Like it must have been created in the same way. Uh, I'm gonna, like, knock on it to see if I can see if it's, like, hollow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as you... Yeah, touch it was definitely the next... As you, as you knock on it, right, you hear this, like, the cacophony of these noises. Now you're hearing the noises, because you weren't from up top. You hear these, like, these, like, low guttural growls, right, coming from whatever the hell these things are. And as soon as your hand makes contact with this thing, you see this, like orange red light just like in the exact same circle and then you see it from like 20 different points just go to inside like probably like two inches and then another concentric circle forms and then like more of these like weird symbols start forming in between these like little nooks and crannies that started being made so imagine like a circle with another circle inside of it and all the lines that made that second circle all have symbols inside of it and then they all trace into the center and one giant symbol is traced in the middle and it like pulses in what looks like fire, like the color of fire, that orange red kind of glow. And mm-hmm. you guys are glowing from beneath as this thing, boom, boom, boom. And that's where we end episode one of season God two of Paradise City. <laughs> um, 
Molly is going to be Good so one. pissed at us. Be so mad. I'm going to be so mad. Um, yeah, so that was episode one called Same Old, Same Old. Uh, and uh, you guys are on the case. You're on the case for something, something. Uh, with shadow monsters and a weird portal. Uh, so we'll go around, do our introductions, get the hell out of here. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's, that's going to be it. So, Cherry, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? What are you up to? I'm Cherry Babum on Twitch, Cherry Babum7 on Twitter. Uh, it's just finally starting to feel functional again. We're trying to get a stream in tomorrow, I nice. think. Nice, good, good. So, uh, either Seven Days to Die or Sotero, or we'll, we'll see what's cooking. But come on by, have a good time. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, Sam, who are you? Where can we find you on the internet? What are you up to? I am Sam. Uh, you can find me at Twitter at the Wizard Fool. Uh, and I am here on Wednesdays. On Sundays, I play Battletech on AP Gaming Real uh, Reels channel. Uh, actually, that's on his YouTube and Patreon because of that game. Um, so yeah, we do uh, uh, Mech Knights and uh, <laughs> do lots of uh, political drama and romance drama and all sorts of good stuff. And uh, then I'm back here. Yeah, I liked this episode. It was good. Oh, yeah. It good. was a good one. Good. So thanks everyone for coming. Yeah. Very mysterious. Um, on that <laughs> note, uh, there is no session uh, after show for this episode. Uh, a few of us have to get and run or cut and run. Uh, so we'll discuss this episode and next episode on the after show of episode two. Uh, that being said, if you want to see the after shows, the session zeros for all the other things we've done and some sweet downloads, uh, check out our Patreon. Uh, go to the five or ten dollar tier. Those are two of the best ones, and uh, that's the best way to support the channel. Uh, thank you guys for being here for episode one. I'm super excited to be back in the city of mist here in paradise city and uh that's gonna be it from us so we'll see you all next week bye bye thank you